أعوذ بالله الشيطان الرجيم <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء والمسلمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to uh, present my uh, yet to complete uh, paper. So the title that I have uh, chosen uh, to present in this conference is uh, as written there, Elements of Mathematization in Kalam, a Preliminary Survey of Selected words, Works. Of course, when I was formulating this, uh, this title, it was a bit over-ambitious. I mean, uh, a survey of selected words works uh, presupposes that you have read like, all the major works and select uh, from them uh, those elements. But as I work on this paper, I realized my limitation that I can only, uh, I basically, I only uh, refer to Al-Iqtisad fil Atiqat of Al-Ghazali, and um, I can only uh, discuss a few, a very few examples, uh, but, but we will uh, explain later. Uh, the, the motivation, okay, amongst the motivation for me to discuss this topic is uh, basically uh, uh, one of our keynote speakers' book, uh, Professor Basil Attai. Uh, he basically, what he, he when he first came to Malaysia last year, last two years, I was uh, uh, very excited because uh, he proposed something uh, to me, uh, something very new uh, that I have not, uh, I have not uh, encountered any uh, one who proposed before. Uh, basically, he he's a physicist, cosmologist, a theoretical physicist. And we know that uh, in uh, amongst the, uh, the frontier of of modern physics is uh, the, is the, still these two uh, theories: the, uh, quantum mechanics and uh, gen uh, and special and general relativity. I mean, uh, until now we have not, uh, although these two theories have, have developed uh, tremendously, and we have not uh, ach achieved any breakthrough of the same magnitude of these uh, at the same magnitude of these two theories. And these two theories require interpretation uh, because its results, its uh, theories are so bizarre, it's so unusual to the common understanding of uh, especially those who come from this, the classical physics background. And it, because it, it, it challenges us to uh, the way we see reality. We can say physical reality, but, but at, the, at the level of atomic uh, and subatomic uh, particles and at the huge scales of, of, of space and time, the boundaries between what is physical and what is perhaps considered to be metaphysical has become blurred. We, 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 don't, we, we don't really, perhaps for, for instance, when the, uh, the atom itself or subatomic particle, I mean, are they really a physical existence or are they mathematical constructs indicating something uh, something that exists, because we, we do not observe them uh, directly, we only observe its effects and we create mathematical models out of it. So, and the mathematical models that, that we produce in describing their behavior is, is, something, is, is, that, is something that to a classical, classically minded person it will, be, it will be something bizarre and require interpretation. Of, and, and they have, uh, there, there are more than a dozen interpretations. Uh, the most prominent interpretation is the Copenhagen interpretation, and and uh, I remember last time in UM I attended Prof Basil's talk, and I asked him a question, and I betrayed this uh, Copenhagen interpretation because it came so naturally because that's how I studied it, and Prof Basil just say what what's collapsing, what do you mean? And so I, I was caught uh, because he has another interpretation. He's proposing, in fact. Uh, a, a new interpretation derived from the tradition of the, of the science of, of Kalam. And I've read the book a few times, uh, at least two times from cover to cover and several more times just uh, focusing on some chapters. And uh, to me, this is the, uh, the if, if I were to pinpoint uh, what 
from from a from a mathematics and physics perspective, when some <laughs> the, the most interesting part is this part, that he actually gave a, a, a two postulates or two uh, truth claims that came from the science of Kalam to interpret um, um, modern physics, uh, quantum theory in, in particular. Of, of, of course, it is uh, at, at, at this stage, it is still uh, raw. It is not yet refined, but uh, and uh, the author of the book is here, so I can't <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm discussing about uh, uh, your book, Prof. Vasil. Uh, <laughs> uh, but earlier, uh, uh, t two days ago, when he in in the in his keynote, he he mentioned something uh, very interesting uh, as well to explain the, the the phenomena of the double slit exp uh, experiment. That that when and and when the the he he made an ana analogy uh, with this the frequency of creation and recreation with the blinking of the eye so that it cannot distinguish uh, that. So this is, uh, to, to me, this is something very profound and new that, and it, it is uh, most meaningful because it came uh, from the, the science of Kalam and it engages directly uh, modern physics and it has the potential to be developed into a real uh, theory, a, a physics theory and with, uh, that gives about real uh, results. Uh, in another chapter in that book, he quoted Paul Davis, and there is evidently a crucial concordance between, on, the, on one hand, the laws of physics, on the other hand, the computability of the mathematical functions that describe those same laws. Uh, this, uh, this is the question, why, is, why nature exhibits uh, the, uh, mathematical uh, characteristics? Um, okay, before that. And, and this is uh, uh, my interest in all this is uh, precisely this, uh, because uh, in uh, we, we we can okay uh, we can see mathematics as just purely a rational construct uh, to describe uh, physical phenomena, or in uh, the Kantian category, I mean he call it the um, uh, a priori uh, synthetic a priori judgment. Uh, of the possibility of, of, of mathematics, so that you have a domain of mathematics and uh, there's a natural phenomena or laws of nature, uh, according to Dr. Basil. And then the, 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 the mathematical aspect of uh, that uh, laws of nature or natural phenomena uh, is physics. However, in the, uh, what's interesting about modern science or modern physics is that uh, the role of mathematics is not only uh, descriptive. Um, I, I, I don't think it is merely what we, we observe phenomena and we construct uh, our rational construct in, 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 a, in, a, in mathematical formulation to describe the phenomena. But we, and in, our, in the history of physics, uh, in the last hundred years, we have made discoveries through mathematics. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's, it's also somewhat prescriptive. I mean, from your mathematical formulation, you we uh, we deduce uh, theories about about nature and later on verify it uh, through experiment so that 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 intrigues uh, some physicists uh, particularly uh, perhaps we can mention uh, Eugene Wigner he he wrote that famous paper the the uh, upper unnatural effectiveness of mathematics in natural sciences Unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in natural sciences, but so so the domain of physics has expanded. I mean, he it's not just a mathematical concept, but through uh, mathematics you derive, uh, you, we we deduce also uh, n uh, newer insights into the nature of physical reality. So I just uh, this is just a rough, intuitive uh, Venn diagram just to 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 capture what what I meant. So it might expand to include some, perhaps non-mathematical, uh, aspects of, of natural phenomena. And at the same time, it also expands, it includes the, the pure mathematical, uh, I mean, the, the pure mathematics becomes uh, physics. But it could also expand in this way. I mean, it may cover the, even the not mathematics and non-natural. I mean, 
because uh, we we now we don't have real uh, uh, clear demarcation between what's physical and what's metaphysical. In the past, it has been uh, subluna is the physical, uh, the, the beyond the moon are all metaphysical. But that is uh, is no longer the case. Uh, now, uh, during the time of um, uh, I, I, I forgot to mention the Pierre Duhem. He was a physicist. He wrote extensively about uh, on the history of science. Uh, during his time in, in the in the late nineteenth, uh, early twentieth century, during his time, the, the atom itself is a, is controversial. I mean, they, they don't they don't really. Uh, some physicists believe in the existence of atoms. Some don't. And when Duhem decided to believe in the existence of the physical atom to him it's a mathematical entity it's a mathematic it's, it does not exist but it it just it's just mathematics it's just a, an object of the 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 mind or in the in the scale of maratible wujud perhaps wujud dhihni it's, on, it's only its existence only in the mind it's, it's not uh, a physical okay Yeah. And try to make the overlap darker. You can see problem. Remove the circle in the middle mm -hmm. and make the, uh, the the intersection between mathematics and nature larger. That was your uh, yeah, that was the the uh, previous one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can yeah, yeah. Remove the, the circle. Yeah. Uh, but this uh, one, uh, this one. Uh, Yeah. Uh, this one is the, the, inc the increased amount of intersection. This one is the possibility that it goes beyond even uh, the so two. Yeah. What, uh, what I said remains to be valid. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I said in the book remains to be valid. All right. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, Duham, the 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 person I just mentioned. Um, and, and he, in, in the book, uh, in save, To Save Phenomena, I mean, it's a translated work uh, from French, uh, he pointed out to the origin, the historical origin of this, um, this uh, the, 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 idea, the process of mathematization. And he mentioned in the book, which is basically a translation uh, from Simplicius' commentary, Plato lays down the principle that heavenly body, bodies motion is circular, uniform and constantly regular. Thereupon he sets the mathematicians or the geometers at that point the following problem. What circular motions, uniform and perfectly regular, are to be admitted as hypothesis so that it might be possible to save the appearances presented by the planets? So the, the, the history of, astro of astronomy is, uh, is, is where we, we look at when it comes to this period of time. Uh, and therefore, you have uh, epis, uh, uh, concentric circles, uh, ge whether geocentric or heliocentric, and you construct epicycles just to preserve uh, what you observe. Because when we observe, it's not exactly circular. So you have to modify things a bit. You have to introduce equants and deference and etc. And um, so the point is that, that circular and saving the appearances. Okay, now, I'm, because my, my topic is about mathematization, I'm, I'm not going to discuss much about the historical aspect, but the, this, the, the circular, how do they define circle? So what is mathematization? Okay, let's look at that circular. Uh, what is a circle? I mean, if you, who, perhaps the definition goes further back, but we can uh, point to Euclid, uh, uh, as a, uh, who wrote the elements where he defined a uh, circle as a plane figure contained by one line such that all the straight lines falling upon it. By, by, by line, it does not necessarily mean straight, uh, according to uh, Euclid. Uh, upon it, from one point, among those lying within the figure are equal to one another. Or equivalently, if you want to put it in a m modern uh, way of putting things, a closed planar curve that is equidistant to a fixed point, that is basically a circle. Even without this definition, I mean, everybody understands what a circle is. But sometimes when you want to work uh, on a theory, you, 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 you want precise definitions, you start giving definitions like this. Uh, so that it, it, it rejects anything that is not circle and it just includes exactly uh, what, is, what is circle. 
And then we fast forward, uh, we cannot go uh, all the details, historical details, we fast forward to Descartes because these are amongst the major milestones. So Descartes introduced the system of coordinates, so now circle becomes a set of points uh, following that formula. And, um, sorry to talk about mathematics at 4 p.m., but uh, that's... Uh, uh, those who, well, anyone who has um, uh, background in high school mathematics would recognize that that is a formula of a circle in the Cartesian coordinate. The, the center would be the coordinate A, B, uh, the radius would be R. So it becomes like a set of points. Uh, we fast forward to modern uh, pure mathematics, so this is a definition of, a, of circle. Uh, it, it might appear uh, alien to anyone who does not uh, study modern mathematics, but we have precise reason why each of those elements need to be there, and this is a generalized uh, circle. Uh, and 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 uh, we anyway. Uh, that's, that's, uh, there, there are reasons why okay, metric space, and you, and when we work in quantum mechanics, we have to understand at least uh, metric space and and by extension, uh, Hilbert space. Okay, now uh, let's move to Kalam. I have five minutes. Uh, I, uh, well, we, we've read to some extent the Al-Iqtisad fil of Al-Ghazali. And uh, he began this work by presenting us with three syllogisms. Okay. Okay, this is not unique to Al-Iqtisad fil it, it is true also to some other uh, works by Al-Ghazali that before he began his discussion in Kalam, he establishes three syllogisms by which he will simply use these three. All arguments will follow these three syllogisms. So if you don't believe in any of these three, make sure you, he will convince you that they are valid. Okay. Uh, and, and after that, the, we, we can follow his arguments. Okay. Basically, they are the disjunctive syllogism or asabru taksim uh, the, f the formal um, uh, representation in uh, symbolic logic would be like that. When you have uh, P or Q, and then you have not P, therefore you conclude that it's Q. And then the usual modus ponens, or istisna, and, and uh, reductio argument, uh, which in modern symbolic logic is basically this, the same structure. Okay, this is one uh, aspect that, uh, to me, is a, is a milestone that is uh, achieved by Al, by Al Ghazali, where, where, where he, because uh, in order for him to, to refute certain um, positions of Ibn Sina, uh, he 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 moved from a more material kind of logic to a more formal uh, kind of logic. Uh, although he didn't go all the way to what we understand as symbolic logic, but we can see that uh, the, the, the move is from a much more word-based logic to a much more structure-based, form-based uh, logic. Uh, so that uh, certain baggages uh, in, in the philosophical, uh, the truth claims from the, f the tradition of the philosopher can be, um, can be removed. Uh, And uh, there are issues uh, when it comes to um, moving from the more uh, uh, by applying logic in, in uh, arguments. And one uh, professor, Wael Halak, wrote, uh, translated this work and wrote a very good introduction uh, where Ibn Taymiyyah criticizes Al Ghazali, but I won't go into the details. But uh, the point uh, for me bringing this up is that in that criticism, uh, something uh, in Tamiya is even more <laughs> uh, in terms of mathematization. He's uh, even more uh, forward. He he brings uh, the, the uh, logic to its f further logical conclusion. Uh, if you believe, if we hold on to some kind of naive uh, realism, then the result will be some kind of very uh, nominalistic worldview. I mean, the the the, the, uh, the 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 logic will become just a play of uh, of rules that you don't really arrive at certainty, or or if you arrive at certainty, it's a certainty that you have arrived at even bef before you apply uh, those rulings. Anyway, so that is what Ibn Taymiyyah was saying. Uh, 
but I, I would not uh, go further than that. So it becomes a more formalistic and, and, and a nominalistic uh, idea of, of, of logic. Okay, now, um, and uh, so that is one example of uh, 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 the process of mathematization in works of Kalam. Uh, the other example, this is a smaller example in Alictisot Philippe de Cot as well. Ibn Ghazali proof, uh, in his proof of the non pre eternity of the world, he uses uh, the argument of the revolutions of uh, the orbits of the, 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 the Sun or Jupiter. Uh, to show that uh, it's, it, it is impossible for it to be uh, infinite. He said that, uh, he uses the, 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 reduc the reductio argument, uh, if it is uh, pre-eternal, then what, what any quantity must be either even or odd. That, that is a trick that mathematicians use all the time. Uh, but if it is odd, then it's one less than an even, so an infinite cannot be one less than even, so it leads to absurdity, so what is leads to absurdity must be absurd, so the opposite must be true. Uh, in Tahafutul Falasifa, he entertained further that the possibility that those, uh, the quantities that, are inf that, that is infinite may not have the quality of being even or odd, but he rejects the possibility of an actual infinity, so still he it is absurd, but o o of course this uh, this can be one minute. Uh, okay, w this can be discussed further, and then the dis uh, finally this is the last uh, example that I'm going to discuss today: the discussion of Arat, uh, the Jawhar and Arat, and he gave many examples: so Sukun wal Haraka and uh, the Alwan, etc. Uh, and uh, and this is an extension. I mean, uh, when we reflect back, what has happened in modern science is that. All uh, many of those arat that previously cons we considered to be arat have, uh, through mathematics, becomes uh, like an essence. Uh, because if we say essence as as mahia, as uh, what it is, uh, then uh, the 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 color red that, that precise color red is the frequency. When Dr. Basil has explained this in his some of his talk, uh, so we have a clear definition of. Uh, uh, an attribute. So here we can also see mathematization as the essentialization of of art. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you.